The Lake Orion community welcomed a brand new Meyer store that returned to its grocery store roots. The DDA purchased the Lake Orion Lumber Company and has big plans for the property, but not before having to fight for its very existence. Dragon on the Lake closed down the streets of downtown Lake Orion while residents enjoyed music, food, and fun, with Dragon Boat Races bringing the weekend to a close. Several familiar faces said goodbye while the community welcomed many new community leaders. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. Those are just some of the stories that helped shape Lake Orion this past year. Stay tuned as we take a look back at the 2023 Year in Review. Festivals, parades, and ceremonies helped make 2023 a memorable year for Lake Warren residents. Many new businesses opened their doors to a welcoming community with a major grand opening taking place at the beginning of the year. On the morning of Friday, January 20th, local dignitaries were invited to take a sneak peek of the brand new Meyer grocery store located on M24 near Clarkston Road. This new concept focuses on the essentials, allowing shoppers to zip in and zip out. So this building is about 90,000 square feet, and we want to make sure that customers are able to get in and out quickly and still have that value, um, whether you forgot spices or you want to come in and do your entire need for the whole week. So um, not only do we have food and we have fresh, we also have a full pet department, we have baby necessities, and we have our uh, entire HBC area along with a uh, pharmacy and a drive through on Thursday, January 26th, the store opened its doors to the public at 6 a.m. Later that morning, Meyer representatives gathered at the rear of the store to celebrate the occasion with a ribbon cutting ceremony. They were joined by Meyer co-chair and CEO Hank Meyer, the grandson of Hendrick Meyer, who founded the supermarket chain in 1934. Grand openings are always a thrill, but for the last 60 years, the main stores we've been opening have been our big Meyer super centers for lack of a better term and at the same time that we love that format and having everything under one roof we also recognize that people want their groceries conveniently and it's hard to put those big stores that close together and really serve everybody so this is a new in many ways a return to our roots of a predominantly food store but with a spectacular grocery and pharmacy and assortment that we think people will love and that will be more convenient to shop for a lot of our customers than our big stores are. On the evening of Friday, January 13th, Lake Warren police officers visited Blanche Sims Elementary School for two hours of fun with students. This is the first school, uh, first kids and cops of the school year and the first one we've done in four years since COVID. Um, I think I have 22 officers on hand. We're going to be playing basketball, Phil Hockey, <laughs> Elmo here, uh, doing a lot of different things. Um, we have pizza. We're gonna, we have almost 60 pizzas coming from Hungry Howie's and Sick Pizza. Um, we're going to feed the kids, hopefully a couple slices per, you know, that type of thing and make it through, but all this within two hours. On the morning of Saturday, February 4th, avid golfers descended on downtown Lake Orion for the ninth annual Ice Golf Cup Challenge benefiting the Sunrise Rotary Club. We are having our ninth annual ice golf uh, tournament downtown Lake Orion. It supports the uh, our projects for the Rotary Club in Lake or here in Lake Orion. Um, some of our projects are beds for kids. Um, we also support the Lamp of Learning uh, efforts over at the high school, um, and then various other uh, smaller projects that we have going on downtown. We sell out every year. This is the first year we've gone from uh, nine holes to 15, um, and we sold out this year at 15. So um, it's crazy Lake Orion folks. They want to do something during the winter, so they come downtown and help us raise a little money and have fun around town. On Monday, February 6th, ONTV kicked off its week-long food drive, benefiting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Things got off to a rocky start when it was discovered that a water pipe burst at the Orion Center on Sunday February 5th, flooding the offices of the Senior Center and Parks and Rec. Luckily, ONTV just had to deal with some damp carpets and the food drive went on as planned. Now, in its 13th year, the ONTV staff went live on the air throughout the week and created new content for viewers to enjoy. The community was asked to donate online or drop off food at the Orion Center. As the food drive came to an end on Friday, it was announced that more than $8,000 was raised during the week. 
Much of that came from generous sponsors and the business community. Well, 2023, the 13th annual Food Drive for Fish, um, always an exciting time for Orient Neighborhood Television. Our staff all come together at, at one time. We really kind of call this our Super Bowl. We use all the technology um, at our fingertips that we have available to use it for a good cause to help uh, the food pantry try to bridge that gap from the holiday season into uh, the spring season. And our goal this year was $5,000. And uh, we had a lot of help from our community sponsors, our local businesses and corporations. Over 30 businesses came out to help uh, the food drive this year and fish with a minimum of $100 donation, which is fabulous. We can't thank our sponsors enough for the support they gave fish. 100% of all donations go right to the food pantry. Uh, this cash is so needed at this time with the, uh, the inflationary uh, uh, pressures put on families and their food bills. On the evening of Tuesday, February 7th, the Orient Art Center hosted an opening reception for its first art exhibit of the year. Students from Lake Orient's three middle schools, Oakview, Walden and Scripps, were encouraged to submit work in a wide variety of media. Approximately 90 total pieces are on display in the Art Center's gallery. We've always done a middle school show and um, through the pandemic our shows kind of slowed down and as our board got together this year at the beginning of the year we just decided we were ready to bring back our, our exhibitions and um, pair back up with the school so we're really focusing this year on getting more student work into the gallery. On the morning of Saturday, February 25th, fifth graders representing all of Lake Orion schools gathered at Walden Middle School for the 38th annual Battle of the Books competition. The students formed 27 teams and were challenged to read nine books, which were revealed last November. The Orion Township's Library's Youth Services staff came up with 200 questions and whittled them down to 50, asking the teams to submit the correct title and author for a possible maximum total of 100 points. We read the summer before, so we read a bunch of books and pick the top 10 books we like and we announce the titles in November at the kickoff at the library so they've had about three, three to four months depending on the timing to read the books, um, uh, prepare their teams and study for battle. Finishing in third place with 91 points was the team known as S'more Books. Coming in second with 93 points was the Rainbow Readers and named champion of the 2023 Battle of the Books with a perfect score of 100 was Team Fairy Tales from Orion Oaks Elementary. I got really excited and I started shaking and I got a stomachache when I was like, when the, the second, to, second place team got called, I was like, that means we won. And I kept telling the team that we're gonna win because we got every single question right. And they're just like, well, we don't know if we spelled it right and everything. And when we found out we won, I was like, oh my God, I got really excited. On the evening of Saturday, March 4th, more than 150 firefighters, dignitaries, and members of the community arrived at Paint Creek Country Club for the 36th Firemen's Charity Ball hosted by the Orion Firefighters Association. Attendees enjoyed dinner, music, and had many chances to come away with fantastic raffle prizes donated by local sponsors. So we have a, a host of different uh, uh, ventures, one of them being the uh, Miracle League Field. We sponsor and we, we provided funding to the scoreboard for the Miracle League Field. So in addition to that, we have the Adaptive League within the township. The Adaptive League is a, need, is a league for special needs children in the township. And the OFFA was the first group to ever sponsor this baseball team. And so we provide them funding every year, no questions asked. In addition to that, we have a scholarship fund for first responders, a burnout fund in case you're burned out of your home, and other uh, charities and events throughout the community that we, use, that we help support, in addition to uh, helping local kids and families at Christmas time. On the evening of Tuesday, March 7th, the Lake Orion DDA hosted an informational meeting at Village Hall to give an update and take questions on the proposed development of the parcel of property that is currently occupied by Lake Orion Lumber Company. DDA Director Molly Lalone welcomed those in attendance and led the presentation alongside architect Scott Reynolds and village manager Darwin McCleary. We want to change the conversation at that corner. We want it to be downtown Lake Orion's corner, not a developer's corner. We want this to contribute to our downtown and to our um, residents. We want to give them something that they can use. And we've got several different uses that we have planned. On Wednesday, March 8th, 
More than 100 women and some men gathered at the Paint Creek Country Club for the fourth annual Women in Business Conference. Hosted by the Oregon Area Chamber of Commerce, the event coincided with International Women's Day for the first time. Participants enjoyed lunch, received gift bags, and listened to inspirational messages from three keynote speakers. Oh, we're super excited to host our fourth annual um, Women in Business Conference. I came here to the chamber four months ago yesterday, and when I saw that they had a Women in Business Conference, I was super excited to have it on International Women's Day. It just seemed like such a natural fit. So we're able to celebrate this beautiful day with 100 plus people um, and kind of be part of a greater movement than just in Orion Township. On the morning of Saturday, March 18th, Orion Township's Parks and Rec hosted its annual Bunny Bop event at the Orion Center. Families were asked to pre-register for the event, which was divided into three sessions with 50 kids and family members per session. Uh, at check-in, they uh, got a craft kit so that they could take those crafts home to work on um, some cute little activities for them to do. The, we had the Easter Bunny downstairs. He um, was on a full belly, he was in a really good mood, he got to meet with all of the kids. And then we all also had um, a new person to our event, her name is Alicia, she's a bubbleologist, and she did some bubble magic with the kids, which is a great addition to the program. Oh yeah, and of course we had the egg hunt. Due to snow and windy conditions, the first egg hunt of the day was moved inside the Orient Center, although the kids didn't seem to mind. The second and third egg hunts took place outdoors, just like the Easter Bunny intended. On the evening of Saturday, March 25th, the Lake Orion Lions Club hosted the seventh running of the Lions races at Boulder Point Golf Club in Oxford. Attendees enjoyed a taco bar and took part in raffles, but the highlight of the evening was the Lions races. 24 wooden lions were decorated by local businesses and community organizations and were lined up six at a time. Large fuzzy dice determined which lions would advance and attendees would bet on the outcome. As a matter of fact, our own ONTV Lion won the second race of the night. The atmosphere is uh, really exciting. This is our tech second year back after COVID, and uh, just everybody seems to be pretty excited to be here, uh, vote on their Lions, eventually bet on their Lions, be part of the raffles, and uh, enjoying the food. So it's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm tonight. On Saturday, April 8th, hundreds of children and their parents arrived at Children's Park for the American Legion's annual Easter egg hunt. Fifteen hundred plastic eggs were scattered throughout the park, which were scooped up in about 90 seconds. Attendees were then invited to enjoy a pizza party at Post 233, located right across the street from Children's Park. This is amazing. We have been doing this for I don't know how many years, and it grows and grows, and it's wonderful for the community, and the American Legion just loves to have you folks. Please, just it's just wonderful. We, we, I'm, I'm excited about it. Look at all this. This is just cool. I'm telling you. But uh, that's what we're all about over across the street at the Legion. On the evening of Friday, April 14th, ONTV hosted its Volunteer Appreciation Banquet at Palazzo de Bacci on M24 in Orion Township. More than 60 volunteer producers, staff, and board members enjoyed a buffet dinner and a few games of bocce. It was the first time the banquet was able to be held in person since 2019. The highlight of the evening was an award ceremony recognizing the most active volunteers and producers from 2022. Named Volunteers of the Year were Steve and Dorenda Balanecki, who have helped out on concerts in the park, the ONTV Food Drive, and other studio productions. Total surprise. Total surprise. Total but surprise. we're so excited. Yeah. We just love working at the station. It's, it's, we call it, we have to go to work. And we love it. <laughs> Named producer of the year was Badri Rao, who talks to professors from around the world on his show, Ideas and Insights. I was surprised pleasantly, and I'm, I'm overwhelmed because uh, ever since I, I contacted Ian, my experience with ONTV has been uniformly pleasant and extremely instructive and beneficial. So I'm very, very grateful to be part of the ONTV family. The podcast of the year award went to Tracy Woodrum, who invites guests to talk about real estate issues and community news on her series, Tea with Tracy. I was completely surprised. Oh, it was so, I feel so honored. I love ONTV and I love 
coming and seeing everybody um, when I come in to do my show, and this is really special for me, so thank you. And receiving the Spirit of Public Access Award were the Oakland County Scouts, responsible for producing the series Scouting on Air. The group writes, shoots, and edits the show, which is now in its second season. On the evening of Monday, April 17th, Lake Orion Community Schools hosted its first safety summit in the Performing Arts Center of Lake Orion High School. The public was invited to meet with numerous community groups offering information in the lobby, including North Oakland Community Coalition and Orion Area Youth Assistance. At 7 p.m., school staff and local law enforcement gave a presentation on the ways the district is trying to make all of Lake Orion schools safer. So at 7, we'll actually have a formal presentation. Uh, we, we're going to have a couple segments uh, on uh, prevention and then one on response. Um, I basically will MC and kind of work us through the event. Uh, but again, we're talking about the things that we are doing and, uh, you know, to support kids as well as the uh, different strategies to keep, keep students safe. Um, and then we'll get into the response part of it if there ever is, you know, call for uh, emergency responders. On the evening of Friday, April 21st, Orion Township Parks and Rec set up home base at Camp Agawam and launched the 7th annual Orion Green Up. Volunteers were assigned cleanup locations and were given garbage bags and a commemorative shirt. So we've heard over the years that uh, people, they really want an opportunity to do cleanup throughout the weekend or throughout a week. So this year we decided to bring it to, uh, have it on Friday night, more of a social gathering. We'll do our tree planting for uh, Tree City, Arbor Day. Um, we'll have a little bit of food, we'll have a bonfire, play some games, grab your uh, assignments, a shirt, everything, and we'll just kind of hang out for a little while. And then this weekend, as you can tell, it's it's April. It's second <laughs> winter in Michigan, so um, Sunday might be a little nicer for people to go out. And then throughout the next week, so change it up a little bit. We heard people's concerns, and they still want to help. It's amazing. So. On the morning of Wednesday, April 26th, a team of volunteers from the Lake Orion Home Depot gathered at Friendship Park to build six raised garden beds. The garden beds joined 32 garden beds that Orion Township opened to the public in 2014. The current beds that are there are all low to the ground. And um, actually after personally being out here and renting one of the spaces, um, my mom had a hard time with her artificial needs. And I thought there's gotta be a way that we can get some raised beds. So the senior citizens or people in the community that are having the same trouble have the opportunity to come here and garden. The project is the result of a grant that was approved in 2019, but the COVID pandemic postponed construction for several years. On the evening of Thursday, April 27th, friends, family, and colleagues gathered at 313 Pizza Bar in downtown the Orion to celebrate the career of outgoing Police Chief Harold Rossman. Rossman began his career with the police department in 1987 as a reserve officer. He attended the police academy in 1992 and went full-time in 1995. He was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 2001, then stepped in as police chief when former Chief Jerry Narsh retired. Rossman is a Lake Orion native and has seen the community develop and grow. Any final words to the people of Lake Orion? Just that, um, uh, again, I'm proud to be able to serve you. Um, I love all the residents here, the business people, and I thank everyone from Village Council to former Chief Jerry Narsh to the citizens um, that have backed me through the years, supported me through the years. Um, I am never going to forget my hometown of Lake Orion. Um, again, I love everybody here, and God bless everybody. It's again, you you made my dream come true. Um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a police officer, and you know what? I was a police officer, and then made it to lieutenant, and then to chief, and I never thought that would ever happen. I just wanted to be just a cop. And, uh, but no, I thank everybody for their support, their love. At the beginning of May, Blanche Sims Elementary School's Student Council began a drive to collect cereal boxes to donate to those in need. Students in all grades were asked to bring in cereal to help reach their goal of 400 boxes. So these are all the cereal boxes we collected and at the end we're going to tip them like dominoes and then we're going to send them to uh, blessings in a backpack. 
Um, basically, you had to bring in a bo- uh, cereal. You couldn't have bags. It had to be boxes, and they couldn't be opened. So um, we got a couple from the kindergarten class. See, Miss Stewart started it uh, over there. Let's give credit to her. <laughs> Miss Stewart and Mrs. Heck both started it. Um, there are student council leaders. They thought, hey, why don't we do something else for those in need? So we decided, hey, why not? We started working on getting them all collected May 1st, actually. We started collecting them May 1st, then we ended May 10th, and then ever since May 10th, we've been like putting all the cereal boxes together, counting them up. The goal was to get 400, and if we got 400, we got 422. Um, 450, really? Oh, that's the last I saw was 422. I stand corrected. Three, two, one. On the morning of Thursday, May 4th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce teamed up with the Lake Orion DDA to celebrate Small Business Week. Things kicked off at 20 Front Street where business leaders and dignitaries gathered for introductions. Then the group split up into two teams as they visited the businesses that populate downtown Lake Orion. Today we are celebrating small business in downtown Lake Orion. So the chamber and the Downtown Development Authority teamed up to do a small business walk. Our aim today is to visit about 60 businesses and just walking in with a sweet treat to say thank you for keeping your doors open and servicing our community. It's small business day every day for me, <laughs> absolutely. That's the focus and the passion um, that I have and, um, and that Joyce from the Chamber has as well. We both um, are passionate about supporting our small businesses. On Saturday, May 13th, the Lake Orient Post Office took part in the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. Postal customers were asked to leave bags of non-perishable food at their mailbox, where letter carriers would collect them and bring them back to the post office. Representatives of the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry were on hand to transfer the donations into a trailer that delivered them to the food pantry. It, it gives us a huge, um, I guess, shot in the arm. We'll get probably between anywhere between 25,000 and 40,000 pounds of food uh, this weekend. And currently we're using, uh, going through about 20,000 pounds of food a month. So basically that will give us a, a couple months worth of food just in this food drive alone. So it's, it, it's a big help. Most of us feel that it's a, a little extra work but the benefit of it, it fills our heart with happiness and we don't mind doing it at all. So. You know, we, we sometimes get a little disappointed that we don't pick up enough, but um, when we pick up a lot, it, it really brings us joy. On Thursday, May 18th, Garland Beer GC hosted its first car cruise of the 2023 season. Dozens of classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods gathered at the dealership for the first of five cruises scheduled throughout the summer, all benefiting local nonprofit organizations. Because it's it's part of our community, and it, and and they and we're giving to somebody who is also giving back to others, and we want to be part of that. We want to do that every time we can help somebody out. We try to do it, and these car shows expose these guys to like Love Inc. Or uh, last year we had the parade group was here. Uh, we we had the veterans a lot of times, so it exposes these these drivers who live in the community to know, you know, what's going on. Selected as the beneficiary of the first cruise of the season was Love Inc., who kept the proceeds from food sales and a 50-50 raffle. The Orient Art Center's Art and Flower Fair kicked off on the morning of Saturday, May 20th, and concluded on Sunday, May 21st. More than 100 vendors lined the streets of Flint and Broadway with a heavy emphasis on art. The Art Center offered crafts for kids while visitors enjoyed food and music, and of course, there were flowers galore. 
flowers. We have so many flowers. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. We have um, three or four different flower vendors and the streets are filled, so we're very excited. It's very beautiful and I'm excited to see all the different colors. It really brightens the town up. We've had a huge turnout this year. We were actually turning away vendors. We haven't had that in quite a while. Um, so we have been able to be a little bit more selective on our vendors too. We have a lot more art here this year, which has been a big goal of ours from the beginning is we want to just infuse art into this community along with the home improvements and we have a lot of great food vendors. So um, it's been great to see all the people turn out for this. Um, we have at least 106 vendors. Um, so far, there's going to be a couple more tomorrow. So. On the morning of Sunday, May 21st, well over 250 runners and walkers gathered at the Orient Center for the start of the 27th running of Orient Township's Dragon Dash 5K. Participants made their way to the starting line near the Orient Center's entrance, and at 9 a.m., the race was underway. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Why do we do it? We do it because it's a great family event. Uh, it's fun for, for runners to come out with their family, um, be outside, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the trail, enjoy the parks. It's just a, it's a good, fun, well, fun if you're a runner. It's a fun event. On the morning of Monday, May 29th, well over 400 runners and walkers gathered in downtown Lake Orion for the seventh running of the Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K. It was the largest turnout in the race's history. The start-finish line was set up near Children's Park, and at 9 a.m., runners and walkers taking part in the five-mile race began their journey. Good luck, everybody. 5K, we got 10 minutes. Then about 10 minutes later, those taking part in the 5K run were given the go-ahead. Get set and go. Take on good work. The course took participants out onto Paint Creek Trail to Ward Clarkson Road, where they turned around and headed back to the finish line on Anderson Street. Crossing the finish line first was Eric Berg of Shelby Township, who took part in the five-mile course. The 20-year-old finished with a time of 28.01.6. You know, our veterans have made such a great sacrifice uh, for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have especially the freedom to run. Um, that's something that I just delight in and just enjoy so much is running. Uh, and I'm grateful that our veterans have created that opportunity for me. The first 5K runner to finish was 16-year-old Anthony Gothley of Madison Heights. He finished with a time of 1830.7. The course was great. Uh, the path was really nice, nice and dense. Um, felt a little longer than I thought it would be. Um, other than that, it was a good race. At 11 a.m., residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the start of the Memorial Day Parade. The police department's 1941 police car led the way with retired Reserve Commander Dave Mercu behind the wheel. His passenger was 2023 honored veteran Bob Mahan of the U.S. Navy. Following the vintage Ford were community groups and scouts, as well as the 338th Army Band out of Livonia, Michigan. The newly added bike brigade was a hit with the crowd. They were followed by numerous military vehicles and the Lake Orion High School marching band brought up the rear as the parade came to an end. At 1 p.m. things were bustling at the Orion Veterans Memorial as veterans, dignitaries and members of the community gathered for the annual Memorial Day ceremony. Board Chair Dr. Joseph Mastro Mateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced the presenters, including Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Wright of the U.S. Air Force, who gave the Memorial Day address. It's a day all Americans should take a moment out of the day to honor the more than 1.1 million men and women who made this ultimate sacrifice for our country. On the evening of Tuesday, June 6th, 539 members of Lake Orion High School senior class walked across the stage at Pine Knob for their commencement ceremony. It was a bittersweet moment as the graduates said goodbye to fellow classmates, teachers, and staff, and celebrated the end of their high school years. Class of 2023, would you please stand?
please move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations, Dragons, you've just graduated! On Saturday, June 10th, the Orient Township Public Library hosted a fun outdoor event to officially kick off its summer reading program. Visitors enjoyed music and games, ice cream and cotton candy, crafts and face painting, and even a rock climbing wall. I, I think it's wonderful. It's, it's such a fun event. Uh, we always fill the property completely. Um, it's really one of the times where we get to let the library be everything. We've got rock bands and climbing walls, and it's just a day to have a lot of fun. On the morning of Monday, June 19th, the Chamber of Commerce hosted the first ever Good Morning Orion Legislative Breakfast at Spring Hill Suites by Marriott in Orion Township. Chamber President and CEO Joyce Donaldson welcomed those in attendance and introduced Township Supervisor Chris Burnett, who gave a township update. The highlight of the breakfast was an appearance by U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, who has been representing Michigan in the Senate since winning the election in 2000. Before that, she was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives since 1997. The senator touched on a wide variety of topics during her presentation, including health care, jobs, and manufacturing. Despite Orrin Township being a predominantly Republican region, the Democratic senator received a warm welcome. Well, this isn't about party in Michigan. It's about growing our middle class. It's about our quality of life. It's about protecting our Great Lakes. And I'm so excited because we're making things again in Michigan. You know, we've got a manufacturing renaissance going on that's going to help everybody. So uh, that's what I'm focused on. Beginning on Thursday, June 22nd, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for the Lake Orion Lions Club's annual Jubilee. Skirbeck Entertainment Group returned once again to set up the rides, games, and carnival food that Lake Orion residents have come to enjoy year after year. The Lions Club set up the beer tent in the parking lot near Children's Park, where partygoers danced to music provided by Full Tilt on Friday and Scotty Doesn't Know on Saturday. The Jubilee is the Lions Club's largest fundraiser of the year and gives longtime residents a reason to reunite every summer. Oh yeah, it brings a lot of people together. You see people that, you know, you, we start talking about you know, the old days in Orion and these, I listened to so many conversations in the beer tent last night and it, it's, it is really fun seeing people you don't see very often and they just happen to be coincidentally in town for Jubilee. While the Jubilee was kicking off on Thursday evening, another family event was taking place in Orion Township just a few miles away. On the evening of June 22nd, families were invited to come out to the Orion Center for Summer Sizzle. Hosted by Orion Township Parks and Recreation, visitors enjoyed inflatables, food and refreshments, games and more. Music was provided by Guy Lewis and Chautauqua Express. Parking and admission was free to the public. And thanks to an overcast sky, temperatures weren't quite sizzling. As a matter of fact, the weather was fairly pleasant. Well, tonight we have our annual summer sizzle. And I don't know about you, Joe, but I'm sizzling. It's pretty warm out here. Um, we're very fortunate that it's overcast, so it's not too bad. In years past, it's been typically very warm for this event. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of cloud cover tonight. On the morning of Sunday, June 25th, Orion Township hosted their second annual Kicking for a Cause kickball tournament at Friendship Park, benefiting Miracle Field. A total of six municipalities took part in the event, including Oxford, Bloomfield Township, Macomb Township, Springfield Township, and last year's champions, Rochester Hills. All six teams gathered at Miracle Field for the opening ceremony, then ventured out to the park's dirt diamonds for some fierce competition. In the first round, Orion faced McComb and came away with a 6-3 loss. Oxford defeated Springfield 3-1 and Rochester Hills trounced Bloomfield 7-1. In round two, Orion defeated Springfield 5-2. Bloomfield destroyed McComb 11-5 and Rochester Hills shut out Oxford 8-0. In the next round, McComb defeated Oxford to face number one seed Rochester Hills and Springfield moved past Orion to face number two seed Bloomfield. When the dust settled, defending champs Rochester Hills would face Springfield in the championship game at Miracle Field. 
In the top of the seventh, Springfield had one last chance to avoid the shutout. The game ended on a pop fly, and Team Rochester Hills celebrates their second consecutive title. The team claimed the $5,000 first place purse to go to the charity of their choice, with Springfield walking away with $2,500. Brian, apparently last year was no flu. No, uh, man, we had a great a great event out here. It was a lot of fun. First of all, you know, you're doing it for charity, so it's a lot of fun. And the highlight is still the, the game at noon with the, the Miracle League getting to cheer on the uh, the champions and the athletes. But I got to tell you, our team was strong. I think we gave up two runs the entire day. Uh, and the defense was great. And just a lot of good people having a good time. Uh, we have no professionals, uh, as you might uh, as it might be rumored, but everyone just has a good time. And I'm really proud of our Rochester Hill squad for being back-to-back champions. On the evening of Friday, June 30th, residents living on the shores of Lake Orion lit up the night by placing flares on their property. Flares were sold at Wonder Cleaners and Ed's Broadway Gifts and acted as a fundraiser for the Lake Orion Lions Club. This tradition dates back to 1945 when the community celebrated the end of World War II and continues to this day. The following evening, residents and visitors from neighboring communities camped out along M24 to get a good view of the annual fireworks display. This year, the show was put on by the newly formed Lake Orion's Fireworks Foundation. A fundraiser held at OPA Food and Spirits in June raised over $15,000 to keep the tradition alive. Ace Pyro once again launched the fireworks from a barge on the lake. The show started a few minutes early to try to beat the rain that was in the forecast. The crowd didn't seem to mind when it started to drizzle, just as the grand finale wowed the spectators. On the morning of Monday, July 24th, 100 golfers showed up at Pink Creek Country Club to take part in the Chamber's 8th annual golf outing. Golfers and sponsors started the day off with breakfast in the banquet room, then headed out for 18 holes of golf on a beautiful summer day. Well, first of all, I feel extremely grateful that we had chamber weather because the weather today was perfect. Paint Creek Country Club did a fabulous job. I am so eternally grateful. Also, we had 204 members and community members participate to make this day as great as we did. That includes our our golfers, our sponsors, our raffle donors, our swag bag donors, and all of our volunteers and our exceptional golf committee. So I'm really excited. It's my first time here doing this golf outing, so you can imagine my enthusiasm of having all these people come together for a common cause, which was our golf outing today. The three-day music festival known as Tommy Stock kicked off on Friday, July 28th and came to an end on Sunday, July 30th. Visitors enjoyed a wide variety of music at the Fire Bowl with more entertainment at the Tiki Bar set up near the newly refurbished beach at Thomas Lake. So yeah, uh, Tiki Bar is set up right down by the new and improved beach here at Camp Agawam. If you haven't been to the beach at Camp Agawam, you should come just for the beach. Uh, they've doubled, more than doubled it in size. It's a beautiful beach. We've got a Tiki Bar and a tent set up. We've got cold drinks and uh, there's food vendors here. We've got frozen pina coladas, margaritas. You can come have a great time right on the water. Started in 2015, Tommy Stock acts as a fundraiser for the Friends of Camp Agawam, allowing them to maintain and improve the 140 acres making up the campsite. The group has made major improvements to the Fire Bowl where the bands perform, but their work is not done. Well, absolutely. I mean, we're not done at the Fire Bowl. We want to we want to put, put a covered pavilion over that stage, a permanent concession stand, um, uh, upgrade the power. There's the the permanent restroom that's down there that needs some work so that we don't have to bring in porta john. So there's a lot of work that can be done, and and any, every little bit helps. I mean, anyone that uses this park, well, I mean, I hear a lot of people, oh, it's a township park, and the township should do that. We are the township, yeah. right? So we, we can do that and we come together and we can do it in a fun way. We can have concerts and we can have festivals and we can do things that raise money, have a good time and, and make this place even better for the, you know, the, for the people of Lake Orion and Orion Township. This weekend came to a close with boobs, tubes and dudes at the Tiki Bar and on the beach. The event benefits the Real Men of Orion and Real Men Wear Pink campaigns as they raise money for their fight against breast cancer. The partygoers enjoyed music and refreshments and gathered for a huge pink float out on the water. 
Well, I want to say thank you, especially to uh, you know the township, uh, Chris Barnett, Aaron Watley, the people that allow us to use this park and put on this great uh, this great event. And then we've got a great team at at the Friends of Camp Agawam, Friends of Tommy's Lake and Camp Agawam. On the evening of Friday, August 4th, dozens of trucks, tractors, and emergency vehicles gathered at Friendship Park for Orion Township's 20th annual Big Rig Gig. It's estimated that almost 2,400 cars came out to the free event, making it the biggest and best Big Rig Gig ever. About 21 years ago, I had a baby boy who loved trucks. <laughs> so that's, I was looking for a new special event Waterford had this event called Touch a Truck, and I'm like, yeah, let's check it out, see what it's like. I stole the idea, and 20 years later, here we are. Every year it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit better. I don't know if I'll be able to get better than a Chinook and the Oakland County Sheriff's Department helicopter. And How can you top that, Joe? <laughs> How does it get better? But every year we come up with a better idea. This year we added food trucks. It's just... Oh, yeah. Every year, businesses, they come to me, they want to come. I'm not going to turn them away. And here we are with the biggest big rig gig ever. Anyone venturing over to explore the Orion Township Fire Department's vehicles had a chance to meet brand new fire chief, Ryan Allen. The chief was a farmer volunteer in Orion Township before moving to South Carolina and Oklahoma. He returned to Orion Township to begin his new gig on July 31st. I think it's a great event. We're seeing a lot of people out. We're able to welcome the public in, uh, other community, uh, other places. So it's been really nice. It's really nice to see the community come and rally. It's nice to see everybody be able to get out and couldn't ask for a better day to do it. On the afternoon of Monday, August 7th, Orion Township dignitaries gathered on a parcel of land located on Baldwin Road near Pasadena to break ground on the township's newest park. <laughs> Our board wanted to be deliberate about having green space. We have a, a plenty of development happening in our community. We wanted to make sure we, we had lots of green space. So we have the, the Playful Dragon just south of us, but this one is gonna be different. This is more, uh, we wanna have an area that pays tribute to the history of our area, to Ginjaville, the Ginjal family. And then also this is gonna be um, some pathways, some trees, a sensory garden, um, benches, more of a reflecting area. And it might seem strange right on a really busy road, um, but this works. I mean, we, we've traveled and looked at other communities that have these types of parks, and this works. So I'm super excited that we're going to be able to bring this to our, to our community. The project was made possible thanks to a $25,000 grant from Canadian National Railway through their partnership with America in Bloom. On Sunday, August 13th, the AU Special Needs Foundation hosted its very first picnic at Friendship Park. Over 180 participants pre-registered with another 30 volunteers helping out with the event. Organizers began preparing the night before and visitors enjoyed food, entertainment and raffles. Magician Anthony Grupito wowed the crowd with his sleight of hand tricks. This year, actually the day that we had our egg hunt, uh, we actually have our 501c3 come through. So we are fully approved for that, and that actually opened the door for a lot more funding and resources and sponsorships. That's awesome. That's got to mean the world to you. Uh, it does. So this event actually, to date, is the most expensive event we've had, and honestly, we wouldn't have been able to pull it off without the ability to have the big donors and volunteers and sponsors like we've had this year. The 2023 Dragon on the Lake Festival kicked off on Thursday evening and continued through Sunday, August 27th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as dozens of artists and vendors set up tents along Broadway and Flint Street. Visitors enjoyed music at the Dragon Pub and Tiki Bar with Sunset Boulevard performing on Friday night and the always popular Square Pegs playing to a packed house on Saturday night. Lake residents got in on the fun on Friday night with the annual lighted boat parade, which has been organized by the Lake Orient Lake Association since 2010. Participants were encouraged to decorate and light up their boats for a chance at prize money donated by Ray C's Extreme of Lapeer. The Fire Breathing Dragon returned to lead the parade that traveled around the perimeter of the lake. Judges on a pontoon boat were faced with the challenge of naming the top three boats. 
On Saturday, it was announced that Kathy and Rick Vandenboom took first place with their pirate ship netting them a cool $300. Second place and $150 went to John and Mary Richardson and Mike and Karen from Terra for their entry, Dragon in Paradise. Third place and $50 went to Mary Matthews for Camping Under the Stars. Dragon on the Lake began in 2009 with the Chalk Art Challenge and the event returned on Saturday, August 26th. Broadway Street became the canvas for 20 artists of all ages. The 15th annual Chalk Art Challenge invited elementary school students, middle school students, high schoolers and adults to compete for cash prizes. On the morning of Sunday, August 27th, more than 200 paddlers forming 10 teams arrived at Greens Park for the start of the annual Dragon Boat Races. The Tyco drummers returned to kick off the opening ceremonies. Following a few announcements, teams made up of 20 paddlers, a drummer and a steersman began to board the Dragon Boats, provided by Great White North of Ontario, Canada. Every team took part in three races throughout the day, with the times from the first heat combined with the second heat to determine the order of the final heat. This is how the championship race played out. This heat, this is going to be a special finish. Oh, come on, chill out, people! Dragon on the lake, 2023, look at it! Look at that! Oh, finish! but I'm going to wait for the official. All right. It is unofficial, unofficial. You're going to have to go to the Tiki Hut to figure this one out, folks. Teams OMG and DDP finished almost neck and neck, and when the times were posted on the board, it revealed that OMG took first place with a time of 1.5104. Team DDP came in second with a time of 1.5160, a difference of 0 0.0056. We caught up with Team ONG as they came off the dock. Um, we we uh, just really dug deep at the end, and and uh, we were getting helped by our, our uh, Sears person, and um, he was he was just pushing us, and so we were just digging deep. So we that's why we were just, we, we were happy with that because we came back from being a uh, you know a late start. How does it feel? <laughs> Great. I mean, it's um, what I mean, this is all a win. You know, it's it's uh, to, to be. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's top three, whether what, whatever happens with the trophy or first place. You know, it's just great, great to be here with the energy to support the community to come together in unity, um, especially at this time. So we're just really um, excited to support that and to be a part of that and and have fun with everybody in the whole thing. On Thursday, September 7th, Palazzo Debachi in Orion Township kicked off the third annual ABC Open Championship Tournament. 250 players from the U.S. and Canada formed 60 teams in gold and silver divisions, with gameplay taking place Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The tournament was organized by the American Bocce Company out of Chicago. On the evening of Monday, September 11th, former Lake Orion Fire Chief Robert Smith emceed an event at the Orion Veterans Memorial on the 22nd anniversary of the tragic event that took place in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Those in attendance prayed for our first responders and sang along with songs like God Bless the USA and Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning by Alan Jackson. The keynote speaker was retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and Oxford resident Cynthia Wright, who was with President Bush when he learned of tragic events of 9-11. A few things that I remember from that day on Air Force One. I guess the first when people ask me about what I remember about that day is that I thought everybody was so professional on the plane. Everybody, I thought, was even keel. They were professional. They weren't freaking out. They weren't losing it. Um, people were focused on their mission. On Saturday, September 16th, Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of Ella Palooza 2023. Now, in its ninth year, visitors enjoyed a full day of music from a wide variety of genres, as well as food and refreshments. Vendors were set up throughout the grounds, and Motor City Cornhole returned to host a tournament at the event. Ella Palooza helps the DAISY Project with their mission of making Oregon Township and neighboring communities a more accessible place for those with special needs. Today we are here for Ella Palooza, which is the annual fundraiser for the DAISY Project. We've got 
live bands playing all day. We've got a beer tent, we've got activities for kids, we've got a cornhole tournament. And as you can hear, there's live bands going on all day. Uh, we got great local talent playing uh, from rock to folk to funk to uh, 80s rock cover band, um, country, all sorts of music. And the money is all going back into the community for to make recreational spaces more accessible for people with special needs. And the atmosphere here today has been fantastic. The weather has been super cooperative. It's been gorgeous and it's been lots of fun. Everybody's having a great time hanging out on the hill here at uh, Wildwood Amphitheater. In 1967, businessman Howard Keatington Jr. bought the property and opened Keatington's Antique Village. The village closed in the 1980s and sat neglected for years until the property was purchased by Stan Aldridge in 1991. The owner of Indian Wood Golf and Country Club, two years later, Canterbury Village opened to the public. On Saturday, September 16th, families were invited to celebrate the attraction's 30th anniversary. About two years of uh, heavy construction and uh, then obviously there were some additions after. Restaurant opened up in 95. The uh, 80,000 square feet addition to the uh, Christmas store opened up in 98. Um, so obviously it was a work in progress. Just a fun place for families to uh, come and enjoy uh, time together. Um, I'm not really sure what his end vision was. Uh, he loved to build things and uh, obviously he loved Europe and he built himself really an English village uh, in, in beautiful Lake Orion. On the evening of Saturday, September 16th, a small army of the Walking Dead gathered at Ed's Broadway gift and costume for the 10th anniversary of the zombie walk. The event began as a birthday celebration of Lloyd Coe and evolved into a fundraiser for the Light at Christmas Parade. After checking in, participants could have zombie makeup applied and then at 8 p.m., the group began their parade through the downtown area. First year we started, my wife asked me what I wanted to do on my birthday, and so um, we had got the idea of doing a zombie walk from one of our suppliers in another state. And so I told her, well, let's do a, let's do a zombie walk and see if we can raise some money for, you know, whoever, and then we decided, well, let's raise it for the parade group, and that's kind of how it, how it all started. On Saturday, September 23rd, Camp Agawam was the site of Orion Township's Fall Festival of Family Fun. It was a perfect fall day as families enjoyed games, crafts, food, and a petting farm. A hay wagon took visitors on a serene ride to a pumpkin patch where the little ones could pick out a pumpkin, roast marshmallows, and make s'mores. So we wanted to give back to the community um, for passing our millage. We wanted to offer a free event and to celebrate the fall, which is also my favorite season. So um, and what better place to celebrate the fall than Camp Agawam, show off the beautiful park that we have, um, all the natural beauty, and just have a good, fun, free event for our community. On the afternoon of Wednesday, September 27th, school administration and board members gathered outside of Blant Sims Elementary School for a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Board President Birgit McQuiston spoke during the ceremony, followed by Superintendent Ben Kirby and Principal Ken Noose. Then students Anderson and Sloan Belko were invited up to cut the ribbon. moment is not lost on me at all. This is a historic moment. You know, someday, hopefully a hundred years from now, maybe they'll be looking at a new building uh, and then we'll be looking just as fondly on this building as we did the old building. The former Blaine Sims Elementary School opened its doors in September of 1950 and went on to earn the title of Lake Orion's oldest school in the district. In March of 2022, the district broke ground on a brand new $26 million building just north of the original school where students continued to learn as construction commenced. The original building was demolished over the summer of 2023 and the doors to the brand new building opened to students on September 5th. It was actually very bittersweet, uh, not only for myself, uh, but for a lot of the community and for the kids. A lot of kids told me, I don't want to see our old school go. You know, we're comfortable with what we know. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, the old Blanche Sims building was home uh, in, a, in, a, in a place of security, a happy place, a secure place, a place we got to know and love. But again, it felt like home. Uh, but 
Um, I assured the students that our new building would also feel that way once we moved in. And not just the building itself, we have to make it our own. We have to make it our, our home, put our own little flair on it, let the kids move in, do their decorations. Um, and uh, before too long, I can already see it. The kids uh, have already changed a lot from something so new, as one kid mentioned, it looked like a museum when we first moved in, to looking something more like a school, a, play, a happy place for the kids uh, where they look forward to coming to every day. On the morning of Sunday, October 1st, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for the final Dowling Buick GMC car cruise of the season. The Kids and Cops cruise was originally scheduled in July, but was postponed due to weather. The event helps raise money for the Lake Orion Police Department's Kids and Cops program at Blansom's Elementary School. Money was raised through donations, a 50-50 raffle, and a pancake breakfast. It means so much. Uh, with, with this show, we're able to fund our Kids and Cops program, um, which we host at Blanche Sims a local elementary uh, every every winter. Uh, we do the winter months about uh, one to two times a month. We'll bring the kids into the elementary school and uh, just have a good time. Just a just a huge play date, if you will, uh, with the kids. So this this funds that allows us to buy our pizzas, our games, um, and, and bring some some extra sponsors in as well. On Thursday, October 5th, approximately 100 community leaders were invited to Paint Creek Country Club to get an update on what's happening in Orion Township and the village. It was the first time the chamber hosted this type of luncheon. I'm so excited that we had such a full house. Nearly 100 um, community members came out to hear our speakers today. I think they um, gathered a lot of really relevant information that they can take back and, back and use either personally or professionally. So I'm super pleased. We had a great turnout. Food was wonderful. The speakers were great. Orion Township Supervisor Chris Burnett got things started with an upbeat presentation on the major developments and investments taking place in the township. But there's something about Lake Orion that sets us apart from other communities, the pride. When someone's in need, when there's, when there's people in need, we step up and we're trying to build on that. Following lunch, Village Council President Jerry Narsh was invited to talk about the upcoming residential and commercial developments taking place that will reshape the landscape in Lake Orion. On the afternoon of Saturday, October 7th, the Orion Township Fire Department kicked off Fire Prevention Week with an open house at Station 1. Visitors enjoyed cider and donuts and a bounce house while taking advantage of plenty of photo opportunities. Well, a lot of times the firefighters only get to see everybody in times of chaos or their worst times. And this allows us to, to make that connection on a, a more personal level, allows the kids to see that we're not these scary things that are coming in when times are bad and make those connections, allow them to see some of the equipment and allows us to kind of show off what we do. And uh, I love the fact that we've got great community support in this, this community. Um, we like to see them come in and we like to be able to provide the services we're able to for them as well. On the afternoon of Sunday, October 8th, families lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the annual homecoming parade organized by the high school student leadership class the parade featured student athletes, clubs, and representatives of all Lake Orion schools, and of course, the marching band. <laughs> student advisor Lori Hogan introduced the crowd to this year's homecoming court. And our first senior representatives, Haley Keo and Kyle Winter. On the evening of Thursday, October 12th, the ladies of the class of 2024 went up against the ladies of the class of 2025 in the annual Lake Orion High School Powder Puff football game. With about a minute left in the third, the seniors are at the juniors 37. On first and 10, Skylar Oswald takes the snap and fakes the pitch, avoids the sack and just barely evades the defender as she crosses the goal line. The extra point was good and that's how the game would end. 49-14 with the seniors claiming victory. On the evening of Friday, October 13th, the undefeated Lake Orion Dragons hosted the two and five Farmington Falcons during homecoming. The start of the game was delayed about an hour due to a widespread power outage earlier in the day. 
During Lake Orion's first drive of the game, the Dragons have the ball on Farmington's 22, facing a second and four. Quarterback T.R. Hill is under center. He takes the snap and hands off to Billy Roberson, who runs into a crowd of defenders, but takes it outside and goes into the end zone for the first score of the game. The Hoffman PAT was good, and the Dragons are up 7-0 with 11 minutes left in the first. At halftime, the homecoming court was introduced to the crowd. Returning to Dragon Stadium were last year's King and Queen, Nick Noose, and Grace Sullivan, who were instructed to crown the 2023 King and Queen, Mario Barishai and Dory Suhai. All right, tell me what's going through your head. A lot of things. Uh, it's cold. I'm chilly. What about you? Uh, my hands and feet are numb. I didn't think we would win. I'm excited, though. That's all. What was your reaction when you heard your names? I don't even remember. I just No thoughts are running through my brain, I don't think. Mine was, oh, my God. <laughs> That's just really thing you want to say to your classmates. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you so much for the this is amazing. Voted. And thank you to the Performing Arts Program. Yes, it, it, thank we you so appreciate much. it a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Let's get back to the game. With 9.46 left in the third, the Dragons have a first and 10 on their own 37 yard line. Hill is under center. He hands off to Billy Roberson, who goes up the middle and turns on the Jets on his way to a 63 yard touchdown. The extra point was good, and that's how the game would end. 42 to 7 Dragons. On the evening of Wednesday, October 11th, Owen TV hosted their 10th annual Wildwood Film Festival at the Oxford 7 Theater. A total of nine short films were screened at the theater and prizes were handed out to the top three filmmakers. Yeah, the 10th anniversary uh, Owen TV Film Challenge Wildwood Film Festival. I can't believe it's 10 years. Um, the best part about this, and even on the 10th year, is we see new faces. Taking top honors was All My Years, produced by the filmmaking duo of Calvin Green and Vincent Martacci. The team also took top honors in 2022. I love being a cinematographer. I love making films. I love using my camera to tell a story. And that, hearing that, like, out of the 10 years, oh, thank you so much. On the evening of Friday, October 13th, families were invited to come out to the Orion Center for Orion Township's popular Blue Batch event. Families enjoyed games, crafts, cider and donuts, face painting, and the Leslie Science and Nature Center brought along some creepy crawlies. Visitors were also able to take a hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch. Trick-or-treat stations were manned by local businesses and community groups. The event is something the community and the park staff look forward to every year. On the evening of Wednesday, October 18th, ghosts and ghouls of all ages descended on Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion for the DDA's Halloween extravaganza. Sponsors and local businesses set up trick-or-treat stations throughout the park to hand out candy to the little ones. A DJ provided the spooky tunes as families enjoyed cider and donuts and plenty of photo opportunities. The event was free to the public. This is Halloween extravaganza, Lake Orion style. We're all out here having a great time. We want our community to come and enjoy their downtown. We want this to be the heart and hub um, for them and where they can create cherished family memories uh, year after year. On Tuesday, voters in the village were encouraged to go to the polls to adopt or reject ordinance number 36.06, proposing a repeal of ordinance number 36.05 which has funded the DDA since 1985. When the polls closed that evening, the Oakland County Clerk's webpage revealed that 332 voters voted yes, while 444 voters voted no to repeal the ordinance, a difference of 112 votes, which means the DDA will continue to be funded through December 2039. Hey, Lake Orion, the results are in! We say! It was almost a thousand voters. Actually, for one issue, that was a huge turnout. <laughs> huge turnout. Um, and I am so glad that the voters have spoken and that the DDA is still valuable to the community. Um, I am so glad that the DDA board can now continue to make decisions that are for the benefit of the community and they can stop worrying about whether or not, our, you know, something's going to happen to our funding. So I'm very happy about that. Um, and thank you, everybody who came out and voted. I know this was one issue and normally, you know, whether you voted or not, it wouldn't necessarily be something you definitely do. So I appreciate everybody who came out and made a point of stating what their opinion was. 
We here at Own TV were saddened to learn about the passing of former Lake Orion High School principal Steve Hawley. Principal Hawley was hired during the summer of 2012 and served for 10 years before stepping down in 2022 due to health issues. After a lifetime of dedication to the field of education, he passed away on November 10th, having a profound impact on students, staff, and the community. Before I officially certify the class of 2022, I want to give you my best and remind you that while navigating your future days, you will always be a dragon. On Thursday, November 16th, Children's Park in downtown Lagorian was transformed into a Hallmark movie as residents came out for the DDA Sing and Stroll tree lighting ceremony. Visitors enjoyed hot cocoa courtesy of cookies and cream and roasted marshmallows over a fire pit. Orion Township librarians read stories to children and the Lake Orion High School Choir performed holiday carols. At approximately 6 p.m., families began singing Here Comes Santa Claus as the Jolly One himself and his lovely wife made a dramatic entrance. Then Debbie Burgess of Builders Custom Flooring was invited to step into the gazebo to throw the switch to light up the Christmas tree. Three, two, one, Merry Christmas! On the evening of Friday, December 1st, an estimated 400 community members gathered at Golling View at GMC in Orion Township for the 17th annual Holly Jolly Folly. Local businesses and community groups donated items for a silent auction in the dealership showroom, and attendees enjoyed an evening of music and food courtesy of Italia Gardens. It was great. I mean, the, the crew here, 9 o'clock this morning, we were already gunned up, ready to go. Everybody was excited. All the employees helped out, did everything we could do. We got a great crowd here again tonight, and we got a great band. And we got the Lake Orion Choir, and we got a great band tonight. Food's great from Italian Garden, so I look forward to this. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work, but we look forward to doing this, and um, it's like a wedding. 24 hours later, thousands of residents from in and around Lake Orion lined the streets of the downtown area for the Orion Lighted Parade. Approximately 70 parade entries gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary School and made their way into the heart of the village at 6 p.m. The parade passed the main stage at Front Street and Broadway, where John Cooper and Rock and Ronnie provided the commentary. The Grand Marshals of this year's parade were Lloyd and Kathy Coe, who own Ed's Broadway gift and costume located on the corner of Flint and Broadway. The Coes provide the costumes for many of the colorful characters that greet the families lined up along the route. The Citizen of the Year was Jerry Norsch, who served the community as police chief for almost 40 years before retiring and is currently the village council president. The parade featured colorful floats, marching bands, community groups, and military vehicles, and ran just over an hour, concluding, as always, with Santa and Mrs. Claus bringing up the rear. So wonderful. So happy to have you here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Thank you for all you do for all the kids. Merry Christmas, Santa. We'll see you at the Santa Tin afterward. On the evening of Wednesday, December 6th, Oakland County deputies teamed up with police and fire from Oxford Addison and Brandon to make sure local children have a memorable Christmas. Dozens of kids were invited to come out to Meyer in Oxford to partner up with a hero. They were given a gift card and escorted throughout the store for a shopping spree. Donations from members of the community helped make Shop with a Hero possible. This basically comes from our great partners at Meyer first and foremost and then it comes to the citizens of each of these areas. So each of the citizens of these areas donate uh, their own funds to help kids with need a little bit extra and they're here to make sure they have a good Christmas. One week later, the Lake Warrior Police Department partnered with members of the military for a similar event at the Target store on Brown Road. Now in its 15th year, the department invited 23 students from Blanche Sims Elementary and Paint Creek to shop with a hero. 
How we take these kids shopping is basically through donations through the year from just private citizens or business owners alike. You know, so we just take donations for a Shop with a Hero program, and we just, whatever money is collected through the whole year is how many kids we can take. So this year we took 23 kids. In the past we dumped to 100 and some kids, 110 kids. So it's just how people donate and what they want to donate. So every little bit helps. Five dollars here, twenty dollars there. It helps every child. On Thursday, December 7th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted their annual Impact Awards Luncheon at Pain Creek Country Club. President and CEO Joyce Donaldson welcomed those in attendance and recognized the Chamber's board members and ambassadors. Following lunch, awards were handed out in seven different categories. Through this process this year, we had a record number of applications. We had 22 nominations. After we, after we gather the, um, the, the application forms, we meet with our selection committee, which is made up of all previous award winners. The process is very thorough, deliberate, painstaking at times, and we all decide on the um, 2023 award winners. So it's, um, it's a tough decision and it's hard because there's so many worthy members out there that um, could easily be winning this particular um, award this season. On the morning of Saturday, December 9th, Orion Township hosted its annual Breakfast with the Grinch event at the Orion Center. 60 kids and their family members attended two sessions, one at 10 a.m. and the other at 1130. There were crafts and a movie and families enjoyed a breakfast of green eggs and ham. The highlight of the morning was a photo op with the mean one himself, the Grinch. Oh, I think it's great. The kids, um, you know, get really into it and they're all dressed up and, you know, have a great time. They love the Grinch, which I think is awesome. On the morning of Friday, December 15th, a small army of volunteers gathered at the Cirque Building Gymnasium to begin sorting the food donations that have been coming in over the past few months. So for the last couple months, the schools, all of the Orient schools have been collecting food. They do their own food drives and uh, different events and volunteer things for the kids and uh, we collect all the food from them once they get it from the community. We couldn't do it without it. We have about 100 members and without our community support that we, is so strong in Orion Township and in, in the village, we, we couldn't do it without our, all that help. Lions Club members were joined by family, high school students and other volunteers to sort food and fill boxes that were delivered to families in need on Saturday. Numbers were up this year with food and gifts going out to over 240 families and 90 senior citizens. On the morning of Sunday, December 17th, approximately 145 runners and walkers gathered at the Orion Center for the start of the 2023 Snow Dash 5K. At race time, the temperature was 41 degrees with a pretty steady drizzle. At 9 a.m., the race was underway. We do it this time of the year because there's not a lot of other recreation activities, honestly. I mean, families are busy, um, but there's not a lot to do outdoors with your family. Um, and a lot of kids are coming home from college. It's a good family time, get together. We have lots of families running out on the course together. Lots, some people like to run with their family. So yeah. it's a great family activity. Crossing the finish line in exactly 18 minutes was 31-year-old Alexander Pollock. All participants received a medal at the finish line. Well, I love it. I love that people come out and support this event. I love that people come out with their families. I love that people come outdoors and enjoy the great outdoors, even on a day when it's less than ideal. I just thank them all for being here and being a good sport and just running in whatever. We couldn't do it at all without the sponsor's support. Um, the sponsors allow us to keep the registration fees down. Um, they allow us to do some creativity with um, awards and prizes and things like that. And as a matter of fact, Genesis, their hats off to them because not only did it, they support us financially, they supported us with volunteers. So I've got volunteers that got up at the crack of dawn and came out and helped us out. And with that, we'll wrap up this look at the major events that took place in Lake Orion in 2023. What a fun year it was. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway, wishing you and your family a happy and prosperous new year. Thanks for watching.